Hello everyone, I'm Kathy Nash with the ACES staff and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar which is entitled Wiki Project COVID-19. Uh, this is sponsored by DCMI and our distinguished presenter today is Diago Lubiana. Our moderator is Jacob Jett and he is DCMI's webinar coordinator. I'd like to ask the audience to type your questions into the question panel box and they will be answered at the end of the presentation. I'm now gonna turn this session over to Jacob Jett, who's gonna introduce our speaker. Jacob? Uh, thank you, Kathy. Um, so as Kathy mentioned, I'm uh, Jacob Jett. I'm the DCMI's uh, webinar coordinator. Um, and I'll be moderating the questions. Um, and in addition, it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker, uh, Tiago Lubiana. Tiago is a PhD candidate in bioinformatics at the University of Sao Paulo uh, and a curator at ME, which is an information startup in Sao Paulo. Um, he's currently uh, working on his PhD, uh, where he works on modeling biomedical concepts in Wikidata. At ME, he collects data about different aspects of the COVID-19 pandemic in the city of Sao Paulo. Um, and he's helped to create and coordinate the collaborative efforts, uh, the Wiki Project COVID-19 on Wikidata, which he is gonna present here to us, um, working with data models, integration of databases, and the reuse of structured data on Wikipedia. Uh, and without further ado, Tiago, please take it away. All right, thank you, Jacob. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and talk a little bit to you about this Wiki Project that Uh, so I won't introduce myself again because Jacob is here for me. So I just go ahead and start talking to you a little bit. Uh, before talking Wikidata, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Wikipedia. So we all use Wikipedia. It doesn't matter if you're from an English-speaking country, from a Portuguese-speaking country. Uh, really, uh, we all use it. Uh, and not only as people use it directly when you go and search Wikipedia, but also Wikipedia feeds a variety of different data sources uh, throughout the internet. So if you look uh, for information about COVID-19, chances are that even if you are not looking specifically for Wikipedia information, you get data from there. Uh, for example, this, is, this in the slide is a, it's an example of a search about COVID-19 cases in Brazil, in Brazilian states. So these blue circles uh, around the states, the cities of Rio and Sao Paulo. Uh, Rio is where I was born, Sao Paulo is where I live now. And this information about case counts on Google, this is their direct result of a Google search. They come from Wikipedia. So it's easy to see that, that this information there, which is curated by the community, is really important, really has an impact on how we see the pandemic. Uh, this has been quantified. So there are many pages in Wikipedia that deal with COVID-19 related topics. Uh, so Wikimedia Foundation, which is the entity behind Wikipedia, so there is this non-profit foundation that runs uh, Wikipedia and many other sister projects, they made, uh, they, they made this uh, report of how people were accessing this data about COVID-19 on Wikipedia. So this is a graph of uh, the visits to COVID-19 related articles. And until the, the, they do this report in the beginning of June, there had been more than 300 million page views on COVID-19 related articles. Uh, this is a lot, a lot of information. And that little point that I selected in the curve, uh, March 16th of 2020, it was the point where the Wiki project COVID-19 on Wikidata was created. The one on Wikipedia was created by other people. It's an independent project which was created independently, but now we have some, some interrelations, very strong relations. It was created shortly before, but at that point, there were already 8 million access to COVID-19 related pages on Wikipedia. In the past, in the next few months, there were more 300 million. So lots of people see this data, right? But 
what is Wikidata? What is this database and what that is has to do with Wikipedia, right? So in Wikipedia, most of the information is a natural language. So we have articles that describe people in their language in, in think of encyclopedic things, like things about information. For example, we have an article on Wikipedia about the Earth, and it mentions things such as uh, that the highest point on Earth is at the top of Mount Everest. Uh, this information is on the English-speaking Wikipedia. Uh, what Wikidata wants to do is to get this and put in an organized format. So you have items which represent concepts. You have an item with an identifier, for example, Earth, SQ2, uh, Mount Everest, SQ513. So these are their identifiers, and they are linked by a property which is called highest point. So the highest point on Earth, it's Mount Everest. And once you structure that in a database, then you can feed this kind of information to our knowledge-based systems. And that includes Wikipedia itself. Uh, for those that have some, uh, are more familiarized with this kind of information, the, the structure where Wikidata stores this information is similar to an RDF triple store. Uh, not exactly, but, but it's, it's similar. Uh, where you have items uh, which are described by properties, with each different property have a different uh, semantic meaning, and you have values. You have values for these properties, and these values can be either uh, strings or dates or numbers, or they can be other items. And when you link items to other items, then you have a linked net, a web of concepts, which is really useful for, well, many applications. I'm going to talk a little bit about this later. Uh, and this kind of information, well, Wikipedia has natural languages, but it also has uh, tables, right? When you go to Wikipedia, you see info boxes. Uh, in the COVID-19 pandemic, you see a lot of info boxes reporting case counts. If you go to Google right now and ask Google about COVID-19 cases, you can see that the source of information, they take it directly from Wikipedia. But where in Wikipedia do they take this information? So Google takes this information from uh, this page, which is called Template COVID-19 Pandemic Data, which is where a lot of different people update this in a collaborative effort. But at the time when I made the slides, uh, you could can, you can see that in Brazil we had 850,000 confirmed cases, and that was the official data on Wikipedia. But if you go to a different Wikipedia page about the COVID-19 pandemic in Brazil, you can see that the amount of cases is different. So even inside the English-speaking Wikipedia, we have this... Uh, this difference between one number and the other. And it's important to note that the English-speaking Wikipedia is only one out of more than 300 different languages that have their own Wikipedias, and each one of them is created separately. So this is a massive data problem, especially when this data is updated every day, so things get messy. <laughs> and this, as I mentioned before, it's a major source. So, uh, Wikidata, being a database that can feed information to Wikipedia, could be a nice way of uh, having a centralized format of providing this data in a reliable, referenced manner. Uh, this, one of the big, this was one of the big motivations for the beginning of the project. So we can mo move this structured data to Wikidata, enabling this wide and, and reliable uh, reliable use across Wikipedia. So data on Wikidata is represented by, for example, a property called number of cases uh, in a specific time. And this number of cases, for example, this 181,000 for Sao Paulo, specifically in that day, you can write some code on Wikipedia in a language called Lua, where you can get this data and feed this to an info box on the Portuguese speaking wiki. And you could have this these data sorts and have the code in every language and get this information out. So that, that would be incredibly useful. But 
to have this, we need to improve. To, to have this working, we need to improve a lot of things. Uh, and by this, I mean not only the case counts, but many other types of different data information that could feed Wikipedia. Wikidata is a relatively new project. It has been go going on for, I think it's, it's less than 10 years. I'm not sure in the date exactly of the creation. Uh, but we are still figuring out the details and how to best uh, oil this machine to actually provide this open linkage data to different projects. So there started the, the Wiki project COVID-19 right? to organize this information and not only the, to take things from other sources and put on, on Wikidata, but really organize it. So figure out ways of modeling this information in a way that we could put in a knowledge graph database and make it available and release it to, to the world. Uh, the, when I talk about open information, uh, it's, this is very broad. I mean, uh, information about what? And Wikidata is an encyclopedic database. So it's information about everything, everything that, that, that can be of interest to other people. So for example, case, death and recovery counts, these are probably one of the major topics of modeling, but also we are in the Wiki project, we, have, we are dealing a lot with the exploding scholarly literature about the disease, about the virus, about uh, the societal aspects. And there has been a lot of great works trying to model both the, the content of these articles, so trying to get the information, like which proteins interact with each others, uh, how the virus re replicates uh, and this kind of things but also the, the bibliometric information. So who made these articles? Where were they made? Uh, are they published in an open or in a closed license format? So dealing with the modeling, both of the, 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 the publications themselves and their content. And one thing that I actually didn't expect when we started creating the project, but it just, it jumped as a thing that's really interesting to model are the policies and, and containment measures that are being uh, made around the world. So these things can be standardized and it's very useful to have them in a queryable format. Uh, but how, how is this modeling done? So here I'm going to show you an example for a, an item of an outbreak. So the, here you have this item for the COVID-19 pandemic in France. There's an item on Wikidata, uh, and being Wikidata collaborative database, anyone can edit anything on Wikidata. But it's pretty much it. So if you go to wikidata.org right now and look for a COVID-19 pandemic in France, you will be able to change uh, information on that page. That might be a little scary at first to think about a database, which is so easy to modify, but that's exactly the reason why it's so fast and why it, it can get so much information so quickly. And we have a good community of people who are checking and double checking and triple checking things to make sure that they, they are suitable. Uh, so just show this, this was the modeling at the page uh, made by a specific user that thought that this was a good way of modeling this with properties, yeah, like number of cases which were already on Wikidata. So these properties haven't been created for the pro uh, Wiki project COVID-19. They were used to model different concepts on Wikidata in the past, other pandemics, other epidemics, other uh, reports about diseases, and they were reused to Wikidata COVID-19 information. So at, at this point, uh, we had this number of case property with, with value of four, so item property value four, uh, and then we have qualifiers, which link this statement to other values. So you have a point in time qualifier saying that this statement was valid on 29 January 2020, that the determination method of this statement 
was laboratory diagnosis of viral infections, that this statement was valid in France. And then we have a ranking here that the user thought it was a good idea to put a ranking. Probably this was the sixth statement of the sort in a series of statements. And there we have a reference. It was stated in uh, a health, a World Health Organization report number nine. So this is the structure of a statement with qualifiers and references. This is not any uh, defined standard. It was just a user-made standard. But then we have a different item here now for Sweden, which is also representing an instance of the COVID-19 pandemic, but now in a different country. And a different user made this affirmation and he used a slightly different modeling. So we use a number of cases as before, but in the qualifiers, he didn't have uh, this ranking qualifier. Uh, instead, he had one called refined date, which probably uh, the date where this information was, the exact time where this information was released uh, and there's the determination method also, but this is this is kind of a user a user determined standard. I mean, if you have the, a different standard for every single country that has a COVID-19 outbreak right now, we will have hundreds of different standards. And that's suboptimal. That that makes it harder to 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 make queries and get this information out in a way that we can reliably trust that they are in this, the same in the same way. So a big part of our efforts in the past three months was to try and get things like this organized uh, in a fast way. And this is challenging. Uh, so in the Wiki project, people had an space to come and ask things how they should model. So they are all volunteers, they are trying to help. We, we are Oh, we are volunteers, and uh, there we can put our, our questions and, and get the community to discuss them. So in every project, every page on Wikidata and on Wikipedia has a related discussion page. In this discussion page, people can make comments. For example, on 16th of March, Thomas comment, uh, should regional outbreaks be classified as instances of pandemics? or instance of epidemics. And there was some discussion, and then we eventually came to some different conclusions. Uh, and there were a lot of different questions of the sort, and this has been going on uh, in real time. It, it's really exciting to see that this, this model is being created and, and composed in a way that is decentralized and, and, and kind of organic. It kind of goes and, and, and ends up itself. So we had a lot of discussions, good discussions, uh, and we still are having those. Uh, these are mainly in these talk pages that I just mentioned, where people expose their points. There's no kind of voting system. So we try to reach a consensus, but this doesn't mean that, that we get a majority. It's not, uh, that's not community kind of goes towards something. Uh, and it's kind of uh, like no no modeling is guilty until until it's charged. Yeah. So th things get on the page, and only when we have a problem that something is actually uh, put up to discussion. So uh, there's a, a motto behind Wikipedia, which is also behind Wikidata, that is the be bold be bold, because <laughs> as it's collaborative, you have to be bold. You have to put the things there that you believe are good. If, if you're well-intentioned, just be bold and put things there. And this this is, and if there's a conflict, then we solve it, of course. So this, this modeling things about the outbreaks, but also about other topics, they go, they go on the project daily, uh, live. So we have data models about outbreaks, we have data models about emergency measures, uh, about hospitals, like how to represent the hospital, about COVID-19 deaths, so how to represent death of an important person uh, or notable person uh, by COVID-19. 
we represent aspects about the viral biology, so virus strains, they have their taxonomy, their place in the, the world of viruses, and we have virus genes and proteins, and these also have to be modeled. So really a, a whole range of different modeling approaches going on. And once we have kind of an idea of what we want to do in this, we have uh, guide pages where we translate these discussions into a more strict format, a more organized format. We have those tables. For example, this is uh, a table for an outbreak where we have the properties that should be used with this type of item, the property IDs. I've learned the descriptions because that's not. Uh, and the examples of where these used these things are used. For example, we have the COVID-19 pandemic in Brazil, and this guide says that COVID-19 pandemic items they are instance of disease outbreaks. So they are not represented as an instance of a pandemic or an instance of an epidemic. They are represented as instance of disease outbreak. Uh, and then you have qualifiers. It's not any disease outbreak, it's a disease outbreak of COVID-19. And that, then you have a qualifier valid in place for this statement. So it's a disease outbreak of COVID-19 valid in, this is valid in place in Brazil. So this is this this little bit here was heavily discussed in the discussion page as, uh, because we have other properties that kind of represent this, but you are not so specific. So I mean, <laughs> I, I won't go into details, but there has been a lot of discussion to get just these three single things. Uh, as an example of a way this was done before uh, and how it's done now, uh, you see here. So this also on the front for the French epidemic. Uh, there's no specific reason why France was chosen in the process, uh, but in the beginning of this, this page about France. So when the cases started there, it was around uh, the beginning of the middle of January. I'm not sure there were information about it. So, but we have this, the same information that I've just told you in the previous slide, it was represented with the properties country. So country France and face it off COVID-19 pandemic. We didn't have any of instance of statements or these qualifiers that I mentioned before. And this, this to be really fair, this wasn't changed by the week project 19. The page was already way better when the project started, uh, but still it didn't have this specific modeling that it has right now. Uh, the difference between one of the other, I just kind of explain a bit why it's important to get things right, is that the country property, it relates an item to a country somehow. <laughs> so you have COVID-19 pandemic in France, and then you have the property country linking it to France. That's good. But then you may have a property called COVID-19 pandemic in Paris. And then the country would also link Paris the COVID-19 pandemic in Paris to France. And then you may have an article like COVID-19 pandemic in Europe. And you can have the country property linking it to, well, Germany and, and uh, England and Italy and Portugal and, and, and France, of course. So it's a property that has many uses. So, and we, in some cases we need this strict version. So this has gone into a lot of discussion in the week project. Uh, and then this was the initial modeling, the face at off to just that it's a part of this big 19 pandemic. And then we have this current modeling to represent what it is and where it is. But the previous modeling hasn't been uh, removed. It's still there. So if people want to, to use it anyways, it can be used. Uh, all right. So besides having these guide pages where people can go there, if they want to make an item and see how they should go about it. Uh, these data models are also represented eventually uh, in a more rigorous format that's called shape expressions. So shape expressions are what the metadata world calls application profiles. 
uh, it gets one type of information and, and it has the many different properties that should be used. So this code here, down here, is an example of part of a shape expression that aims at representing the kind of information that we would expect for an item about a specific hospital somewhere. So we have prefixes. Uh, I don't want to go in depth about them, but WDT is just representing that it's a property and WD that an item. So the first line says here P31. This, this is an instance of a hospital and these other items Really, I'm not sure exactly what the numbers mean right now, but this, <laughs> this sentence means they are instance of a hospital. So P17 is a property for country, and these hospitals, they are in a country, so they should have a property saying where they are. They are also in an administrative territorial entity, so we have a property saying where they are in, in this specific city or a specific state. We have a coordinate location, and, and all these are like, properties that should they should be in an item about the hospital if they are not then the item is not complete so this kind of of uh, rigorous uh, description of the consensus about data modeling in shape expressions it can be used for validating items for checking which items are, are missing instances and and somehow working on more automated ways of uh, improving content on Wikidata. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, a little bit more about this in the last part of the, the presentation. Uh, having this data in a structured format in Wikidata, with all this modeling and all this collaborative effort to get these things there in a public domain format, in a reference format, it it can be useful. In many ways, one of those ways is via Sparkle queries. So here we see uh, a Sparkle query with uh, more code. Sorry for more code on the slides. Uh, <laughs> but this is a Sparkle query that gets from Wikidata individuals that died from COVID-19 uh, during the current pandemic. Uh, so, I won't go into details in the Sparkle code to, but it's important to say that it's, it goes into the database and uses this information in the, in the, from values and qualifiers to craft responses. They are given to us in tables, and these tables sometimes contain information that they can be used to show another race. Uh, I, I, I like this example of the individuals that died from COVID-19 because it's 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 a really really strong example of how this how having this data in a format that is public and, and easy to to find it, it can it can influence you. I mean, every time I run this query, it's just a query, it's just a database, it's just numbers and images, but these are real people. I mean, they they have died from COVID-19 pandemic. And so having this information in structured format, it can really make works that influence how, how, how we perceive the pandemic, how, and, and, and the, uh, I won't go into details because I would get emotional, but the sparkle queries are important and having this information there makes them uh, uh, accessible. Uh, one example of a very good work that has been done with sparkle queries that I want to highlight is this work by Egon, Egon Willinghagen. I'm sorry if I pronounced uh, It's a book of queries. So he with uh, Adam and Daniel they, and other contributors uh, in many ways, they have assembled a, ser a set of different Sparkle queries about different aspects of the pandemic. So things that were curated in the week project COVID-19 and outside of it. And then you could access this book, for example, and check all SARS-like viruses on Wikidata. So all coronaviruses on Wikidata and their information. Uh, search for the symptoms of COVID-19 with the references. Uh, the ongoing clinical trials with semantic 
information query and put on the database uh, about the pandemic itself. So you can make queries about anything. This data is there, it's available and you can use. Uh, and that's really important. So that, that that's a, a really good way which the WIC project has been improving our access to information during the, this pandemic. Uh, so now I'm going to go a little bit about the next steps, uh, also to not take too long. So these are my personal views on which are the next steps of the WIC project COVID-19. Uh, there are many different views on where these things are. It's a volunteer decentralized project and things that haven't been going on, as I mentioned, the data modeling, the Spark queries, they will still go on for years and years, improving and tweaking and getting this model uh, always better. But uh, these are some points that I like to highlight. So one of the next points is to use these data models to parse and integrate other databases to Wikidata. Uh, in this slide, I highlighted three different bots that are being actively developed to help uh, put information about the COVID-19 pandemic on Wikidata. One is the Open Citations bot, uh, which is uh, being run by, by user Sisk. Husmedin is his name, his actually real known name. Uh, he's from Tunisia. And this bot is aimed at getting citation, uh, citation information about other open sources and putting it on Wikidata. There is this COVID Data Hub bot, which is some, uh, it's a way that we're trying to get information about case counts in an automated way. So get information about trustable databases and feed them directly to Wikidata. I've been doing this with John Vitor, which is from uh, Nata, uh, Natal, which is a different city here in Brazil, and this Cellosaurus bot, which is a bot for cell lines, which uh, I've been working on that with people from the Cellosaurus database, which is from uh, Switzerland, which was a bot that already existed for cell lines, but it has been you know, resurrected to get information about cell lines. So I think this, this whole automation things so or integration of certain databases is uh, it's already going on, but it's something that, that uh, it's a good prospect for the future of the project. Um, I think that's that's hot in the in the next steps of the week project is to figure out ways of improving the quality of items. So I mentioned items about outbreaks. I mentioned items about hospitals, and even though we have uh, guides pages that serves as guides for people and you have shape expressions that put these in a more strict format we still are trying to figure out the best ways of how to operationalize this how to make this operational in the sense that these data models uh, are used to verify the information and this, inf this verified information tell us what should be updated so this this little thing is still really in progress in this slide here, I show you a screenshot of a tool called ProWD, which might uh, read like Proud. I think it's Proud how it's be read. And then in this tool, you can get you can put the properties that you want, for example, from a shape expression and future items. So here I'm featuring hospitals in Wikidata that are have a property country pointing to Brazil. And they are located in the administrative territorial entity Sao Paulo, uh, the city of Sao Paulo. And then you have the items, and, and it's this tool nicely shows you. I mean, this item uh, has information about the emergency services, but it doesn't have on Wikidata the native label or the street address. So this is something that I could just click here, go to Wikidata go to the official site of this hospital and get this information on, so people could query via Spiral queries, for example, or integrate this to their own dashboards and databases and so on. Uh, and really, but it's not me who, who will define the, the next of the projects. It's, uh, it's you and it's everyone. So that's, I think that the next project, the next part of the project, uh, and it's a, a project, since the beginning, this has been the core. It's, it's to spread the word. 
So weak data is this amazing database which anyone can contribute and has so, so much information that anyone can benefit from it. So things like this, this webinar uh, are, are really great. They're really at the core of the week project. So this is not an event where, where I am telling you what we have done there. This is an integral part of the week project. This, this is doing uh, the week project COVID-19. So I, I'd like to thank Dublin Core Metadata Initiative for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Uh, so so and this is the point. The project only works with people. So thank you. Thank you all these people that have been working there uh, directly on the week project and all these people that have been working outside the week project to improve information. Oh, every source of reliable information on the internet helping weak data. Uh, thing is, weak data is huge. It gets information from many sources. So it's really, it's really a, 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 a humanity, a project of humanity. Uh, weak project COVID-19 is just trying to get a few of these humans together to talk about the, the, uh, something bigger. So, so thank you very much. Uh, yeah, and thank you all for, for seeing this presentation. And I would be very happy to take any questions. Oh, just before I finish, uh, we have now a Twitter page, so you can follow us on Twitter and get updated. With Thank you very much. Oh, thank you for uh, this talk, Tiago. It's been great. Um, yeah, so the floor is open for questions now. We have a couple already. Um, so uh, I'll ask the first one that we've got in. Um, are you working together with other bottom-up groups such as uh, the www.coronay.org? Mm, I'm not familiar with that group. Uh, may you repeat the question? I don't know if I've got it. Sure. There, uh, so the question is, is whether other bottom-up groups are working with uh, Wikidata. Oh, An example well, of bottom-up bottom groups. That corona coronawide.org so they're kind of community okay. organized yeah yeah so there are many different community organized groups uh, i think that the biggest challenge of the week project 19 is the communication it's getting people together and act and, and making this relation to other uh, other groups so we have been in contact of with a few different uh, efforts like these so there have been in the future bio hackathon that happened earlier this year there were a lot of people that were working with the project COVID-19 related information also. Uh, there's a big group that's working with transparency in Brazil. Uh, it's the Brazil.io group. We are now trying to, to make this, this contact better. So I, I might be missing something, but we are trying to make this context, right? It's not always easy as it's a volunteer work, a volunteer job and people have their own priorities so every every single one in this list of people they have their specific topics they are most interested in and they are really not getting paid any money for doing this specifically so we have some contacts but we'd like to have more so if you're in one of those groups please come to the the, the week project COVID-19 page or send me an email uh, and we can figure out a way of That sounds good. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, let's see here. So I think we have another one here about, um, can you explain more about the completeness measure? For instance, uh, will the checks tell someone exactly what parts of your data are incomplete so that the data can be corrected in Wikidata? Yes, sure. Exactly. So the shape expressions, the Oh, if I can, I'll come back here quickly to the shape expressions. Shape expressions, they have this really nice way of representing what we should expect in any type of item. Uh, you have the properties, and, and then we have this uh, parentheses and a one here, or a plus, or a, a interpretation side, or an these are there are ways of representing if you what you would expect on this kind of uh, uh, 
So I would expect, for example, only one value, or this is an optional value. And if you run some kind of validation for shape expression, it depends on the validator, right? You have this, this format, and you have the database, and the validator will take it and, and feed you a response in some way. Uh, the validators that uh, exist right now, they do a good job, and they tell you, tell you, for example, that this or this or this item are missing something. So they, they tell you specifically which are the, the properties that are lacking a, a definition for this item. Uh, in that way, you can find it out and, and, and fill it. But for, for this to work really in practice, there are still some technical barriers. So the, the structure exists, but it's not super user friendly. It's not uh, easy to, to, to find out exactly what you should, should search, which checks, which shape expression models fits, fits a given item. And also, as, as I mentioned before, as this is all volunteered and shape expressions, they are, well, there's a little bit of a barrier to understand the language and, and to write code in checks. So it, it, they are not, the, the data models uh, described in the guide pages, they are usually more complete than the ones in checks, just because more people can access this, this uh, natural language guide models than they can do for checks, for example. So I don't know if I answered the question, but it's something in that direction. It can, it, it can validate, it can show you which items are missing, but for that, we need to have the models really built in, in a more consistent way, and we, have e we need to have some easier formats of getting this information out. All right, thank you. Um, I don't see any further questions from the audience right this second, so I'm going to ask one of my own. Um, could you say a little bit more about how the qualifiers work? Um, so, so my day-to-day -day is I'm an ontologist, and so I'm very interested because it looks like we're making metadata on triples. So how the qualifiers work? That, that's actually a very good question. It, it's it's way more complex than it sounds. It, it's it's a, it's a good question. The, the qualifiers in Wikidata, they kind of, I, I don't know, I don't know how they are represented, like in the code down there, but they, they are used just as a as an additional information for a statement. So the, the statement would be the item, and they would link this this value to a specific statement. Uh, for example, the I also come back here and. Maybe this is quite clear, for example, in that, that case. Uh, we have an item for the pandemic, okay, and then you have a property, number of cases. Uh, I'll just uh, take this opportunity to explain that even something that seems super simple, like number of cases, is actually super complicated to have uh, in, a, in a strict format. Because number of cases can be number of confirmed cases, number of estimated cases, number of cases, it, it's, it's, it's still, it's, it's not very precise, I mean, but it, it's, it's just precise enough to, to, to be useful somehow. So the qualifiers, they're sometimes used on Wikidata to, to kind of fill the gaps of the properties themselves. So this is one of the uses, it's, probably not an official use, and maybe some, some people would disagree with me on that. But uh, one of the use of the qualifiers is try to fulfill information that it's not completely captured by the proper, by the property name themselves. Uh, in other cases, for example, in this case, we have number of cases, which has a value of four, and then we have a qualifier for these statements. So this statement is linked by pointing time to a given date. Uh, and when making Sparkle queries, we can get these dates and plot a table of cases by time, for example. So this is how they are used and how they are useful. They link statements to values. And that's pretty much it. So when, when properties are being 
made on, on Wikidata. So how does this work? So anyone can create an item. You can go on Wikidata right now and think about the concept that you work, for example, as an ontologist. I'm sure you have a lot of different concepts that, that you work on a daily basis. Uh, and these concepts likely can be on Wikidata. So Wikidata has uh, more than 80 million items for different concepts. Uh, and that ranges from people uh, to countries to COVID-19 pandemic to pretty much anything. Uh, as I have some time, I will take a little bit more. <laughs> when uh, when uh, when Wikidata was created, one of the first uses of Wikidata was to link different Wikipedias. So you have a page for uh, Dublin Core Metadata Initiative on the English speaking Wikipedia, and one in the Portuguese speaking Wikipedia, and one in the Spanish speaking Wikipedia. Originally, they were all linked to each other. So this page refers, it's the, it's the same in these different languages. So you have like this links to this. And then Wikidata came as a centralized way of linking all these pages. So now all Wikipedias link to Wikidata. So all Wikipedia pages link to Wikidata item. And from this Wikidata item, you can get to all languages. Why I'm saying that? I'm saying that because every Wikipedia item, Wikipedia page has a Wikidata item. I mean, this is only only really true if the Wikipedia pages has, has more than one language, it's present in more than one language. But that, that's pretty much the scale of it. It's really good. So we have many different concepts. Uh, the qualifiers and this and anyone can put this. Yeah, sorry. I, I, and the properties, they are not so easy to create because they have to be precise. Even if they are not super precise, they have to have a, a certain degree of precision. Uh, these properties they are proposed by the community. There is a, a forum where people can propose these properties and they are discussed. And if they pass a certain threshold of quality, they are approved. And sometimes properties are proposed as qualifiers. So some properties, they are made to be qualifiers. The expected uh, format of their object they refers to, the subject they refers to is a statement. In other cases, you have, so ranking, for example, ranking is usually, is a qualifier. It's to rank this value in a set of values that, that fuse the term that thing. Uh, other things, they are not always qualifiers. So you can, you have some properties that can be used as qualifiers and, and uh, so that, that depends on. So valid in place, for example, it's usually used as qualifier but I think it could be used, for example, if you have an item about a law, maybe it could be used as a property. So. I see. Oh, thank you. That's yeah. excellent. Um, actually kind of leads into the next question. Um, uh, so you're talking a bit about how the qualifiers, among other things, link Wikipedia pages in different languages to one another. Um, yep. Does everyone see the data um, on Wikidata in their own language? And do the Chex models work across the languages? That's a really good question. So data in Wikidata, uh, it's inherently multilingual. So you have the IDs for each page. If you uh, go on Wikidata and look for this ID, and you change the language of, of your browser, it will change the language of the page. So the, the the labels and the words they are really just they are here they are represented in English because the presentation was in English but I usually use them in Portuguese. Uh, I think the standard the default is if if it it's if it's not on your language then it uses English. But you can everyone can go to every item and put their own language. So. I have this thing that uh, I, I edit big data every day. I do at least one edit every day. And some days I'm really busy. So I just go and click in a random item and there's no, and usually there is no description in the Brazilian Portuguese. So I just put the description in Brazilian Portuguese and then I have made my contribution. So, and if the Shax model works, so the Shax models, they, they are based only on the, 
on the on the IDs. They don't they don't take the language into consideration. So everything that we see in this code extra, but it's <laughs> every point decimal. But I mean, whatever. Most things that we see in this code, they are written in English. They are just comments. So specifically for this hospital, uh, Shack schema, there is one version in in uh, Malayalam, I guess. So there are versions in different languages. Some of those I even I don't even understand the the characters, but they still work. They still work in the same way. Uh, because it's language independent. Yep. Great. Thank you. Yep. Um, all right. So I have another question from the audience here. Are Wikidata qualifiers analogous to internal properties on nodes and relationships in the property graph model? So this is like a hard RDF question. Yes, it's a hard RDF question. And I think that that's a nice moment to say that I am a biomedical scientist. So <laughs> I've spent most of the years of my life pipetting uh, and working with bacteria and zebrafish and models of disease. So yeah, this might be a little out of scope. Is here. that uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly what are the 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 ways this this is representing in RDF. I am sorry. <laughs> I would have to look that up. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's see here. Another audience question. Does the wiki project COVID-19 have ways to make sure that people are not trying to modify or vandalize the data about COVID-19 with bad data? So kind of how do you guys control the quality? That's, that's, that's my answer. So, I'm sorry, your <laughs> voice dropped out there for a minute. I oh, missed it. Okay, manually. We we don't have uh, automated. As, I mean, Wikidata has ways of trying to detect vandalism. So if many things are deleted, if it's it's a it's a very evident vandalism, then it's detected. Uh, Wikipedia has way more advanced ways of detecting these kind of things. Uh, it's but it's it's mostly manual. If we see something that's incorrect, then we we we'll make it right. So that doesn't mean that the data is unreliable. Uh, the data is reliable to a certain extent. It's it, it takes some work to get data on Wikidata. It's not super. It's it's easy to contribute, but to make meaningful, lasting contributions, that takes some work. So it's it's, it's expensive for people to vandalize. So I've came across many types of vandalism on Wikidata, but mostly are people that go there and edit. I, I've seen like graffiti, like vandalism. So people go there and write their names on Wikidata <laughs> items, or or so, some I've re, I've seen also religious things. So like yeah, God rules or something like this. Uh, but these things are we need. We, really need the better ways of detecting these kind of things, especially when they are subtle. If someone uh, puts data that is slightly inaccurate, uh, that would be really hard to verify. So that's why we need more people joining weak data and trying to help us shape this because it's it's a collaborative project. Uh, and uh, as we do, one thing that happens that I've seen happening was when I I when I was modifying some article. I by mistake uh, changed some information that uh, other people were using. So I kind of vandalized it. <laughs> it was not on purpose, it was just a mistake. And then the user that took care of that page sent me a message saying, oh, you, should, you shouldn't do this, you should, uh, you should leave to us. So some pages are actively monitored, the ones that are less monitored, they are more prone to vandalism. And that's something that we are desperately trying to fix in the next few years. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, let's see here. Starting to run a little short on time. Um, so I have a remark about uh, from audience member about the Wikidata data model. Um, let's see. I don't know the details about the qualifiers in the Wikidata data model, but I believe Wikidata, the key unit of information is a property value object called a snack, S-N-A-K. Yep. 
then the statement consists of a main snack, which can include qualifiers as additional snacks. Yes, that, that's the only thing that I can answer to, <laughs> to this is yes. Okay. There's yeah. a snack, have a snack, and then you have a different thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And of course, we have another question. Is presentation recording going to be available afterwards? Yes, yes, it will. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. If I have some extra time, I just want to point out again, to tell a little bit about specific works of people in this project. Because I, if I have a couple of minutes, just to. Yeah? Sure. Yeah, just say that, for example, just to mention some names and, and give a face to some of the things that happen on Wikidata. So, for example, Daniel and, and Blue Raspberry uh, Lane. They are working a lot of on um, clinical trials and modeling clinical trials on Wikidata. Uh, Andrea and Egon, they are working a lot of uh, with the viruses and the things that uh, are related to this on the pandemic. Um, let's see who else. Uh, Xisk is Husmedin. He has been a lot with modeling. Susanna uh, from Finland, she has been doing some interesting modeling about the responses of each country. So when the country closed schools, uh, when they, they uh, I mean, closed airports and things like this, which are not super easy to model, they are actually complicated concepts. Uh, and so on. Min has been working with uh, tabular information and gets the case counts there. So it's really a collaborative process. And we have people from all over the world, so from the United States to Tunisia to Brazil to, to India, uh, the Wiki Project COVID-19. Uh, there's a task force in India from the Wiki Project India that has been doing a lot of great work. Uh, Genoi is one of those involved. So really, there's space for everyone that wants to contribute, and it's, uh, I'm really glad to be working with all these people. We have weekly calls. Which they, happen, they are open calls. They happen every Monday. It happened once every two weeks, Mondays, at the same time as this webinar. So if you want to join uh, one of our open calls, feel free to. We'll have one next Monday. So, just... All right. Thank you. Uh, I think we're just going to wrap up the webinar now. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I, uh, I would like to thank everyone. Uh, Tiago, that was a really interesting webinar. I know everybody really enjoyed it. And I also want to thank uh, Jacob for moder moderating this session. Um, I'd like to remind all of you who are listening today that one of your many ACES uh, men member benefits is complimentary access to all webinars. A recording of today's webinar and a copy of the slides will be posted to the ACES website within a couple of days, and they'll be available to all paid registrants and all ACES members. Uh, within 24 hours, attendees are gonna receive an email that will include the recording of today's webinar and a survey. And I ask you to please send that back within seven days as your feedback is very important to future planning. Again, I'm Kathy Nash with the ACES staff, and I thank you for attending today's webinar. This concludes the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Jacob. Yep. Thank you.